So today I'm looking at this FarmTech timer. Now this console here was giving trouble. Now I'll actually show you a little bit of what the trouble is, hopefully it will show up on camera. I dismantled it to try and fix the problem I could see, and then I found a second problem. And that second problem is probably the biggest issue. Let me just show you what I was getting first. So you turn it on, and this screen here is looking kind of okay. You can see the contrast, you can see the squares, is there any contrast? And what actually happened when I was first turning this thing on at the vent? The screen here was basically black, you could almost not see it, unless you tipped the angle just right and it kind of came right then. You could kind of see it. if you tipped it right back, you'd just about see it. But it's basically black, so okay, it's got a contrast issue, that's not a problem. I'll... Here's an adjustment, just over here, on the circuit board, I'll just pop it open and adjust the contrast. It's not doing it right now, it must be temperature related, I think. No, oh, maybe it's slightly. It is slightly doing it now, actually, you can see it. The contrast is actually backed off slightly, it's got a little bit lighter, the squares have disappeared a little bit they've eased off slightly and as it's on for a period of time the contrast gradually fades back now that makes me think of that there could be an issue with the display itself maybe the control maybe there's a voltage regulation problem where it's not actually regulating the voltage you can see now the squares almost barely visible but the contrast is fading back that's the first issue I found is that this display isn't quite behaving right and when I pulled it apart, I found that there was corrosion inside the battery section of the unit, right? So there's corrosion on the circuit board where the batteries have leaked inside. Some of the batteries in it, they leaked and they have corroded the circuit board. Now, I quickly cleaned it up at the event just to stop it getting any worse. Yeah, you can see that contrast is backed right off now. Barely see the squares. So there's something going on here. Turn it off. Turn it back on again. Yep, contrast is still okay. See the difference between those two turn-ons? And the contrast is gradually fading. So there's a couple of things wrong with this. So we'll pull it apart. Like I said, I already did clean up a lot of the corrosion that was in here. I um, I have some equipment with me when I'm at shows to do basic repairs. You can actually see the staining on here where the battery was. This is all corroded up, all up at this end. There's a little bit at this end, but not much. Most of it is at this end. You can see on the casing here, See the corrosion sitting inside the case there? That's an idea of what was on the circuit board when I pulled it apart. So let's take this board right out. Because I need to do some investigation with this to find out what's going on with the contrast changing. The contrast adjustments on this side, alright? It's just there, there's a little trimmer just there, you can just see the three pads. And the battery leak is this end. So the battery leak likely is not related to the contrast control. However, there is a clock system over here, and the corrosion is up this end, and there is a voltage regulator system up this end, so maybe it's affected the voltage regulator? It's possible. These can be a little bit tricky because the way they latch into the cases, you have to kind of ease out this bit and then you've got to try and get the antenna out. Some are better than others, and you've got to try and get the switch out, there we go. And then we've got to pop this out, a little flex ribbon. So here's the contrast adjustment, which I turned down so I could actually see what was on the screen. So I need to investigate this more closely. There's a the microcontroller sitting right there, all the clock system and stuff like that over here, and some options and things. I don't actually know what half that stuff does. And here is some voltage regulator system. So you've got a little inductor up here, MSC5817. I've never actually looked these up, I should do that, but there's obviously some kind of voltage regulator that's doing something. I think that's like the main supply rail coming down here. Maybe it's 5 volt rail. I really should check that actually and make a note of that. But I'm thinking it could be something affecting this because the battery leakage. Look at the pads for the battery right here. Right, those are connections. So being right there seems awfully coincidental to me. This, this is where the corrosion was up here. You can see a little bit there, maybe actually. Maybe a little bit of see through. But I did actually clean this up a bit when I was at the event. But you can see there's corrosion on those pads there, like this, see. That's after I cleaned it up as much as I could at the event with what I had with me. That needs rebuilding. Got to pull this sticker off. See some corrosion still inside there. I didn't have any vinegar with me, so I couldn't actually neutralise the acid, which is why I said to them I probably need to take it away with me and fix it later on. Yeah. And it could just be the voltage is sagging a bit and it's causing problems. It's possible, but I'll clean this up first and we'll look at the other thing after. Right, it's just peeling a sticker back to check underneath them, and this end looks okay. There's nothing really there looking like it's a problem. That's looking fine to that end. This end here I've also lifted up because it does tend to get underneath them, and there's actually nothing there to worry about in that section. I'm going to peel back a little bit further in case there's something over here more. But there is a trace coming away. This there. Let's peel this back further. 
and that's what's underneath there. Just that one thick trace which goes away. I think there's nothing really to worry about. I was going to clean up this bit here. I'll probably take these terminals out completely, clean it all up, then refit them. So now just taking those out of the board, you can see the corrosion there, quite well now, with that area. So I'm going to scrape all this off, get back to the nice copper, and make sure we've got a good basis there to refit those. And whilst I'm doing that, I'm going to dip these things in vinegar to let them neutralise the acid. So I'll drop these parts in here. It's a bit big for it really, but it will do. And spray them white vinegar. And you'll see it. Maybe you'll see it. You might see it fuzzing up a little bit, bubbling. Yeah, you can just see it bubbling a little bit in there, centre of the spring, where the acid's left over. That's a bit I couldn't clean at the event. So I'm just going to leave that stewing to get rid of all the acid. Well, alkaline, isn't it? It's an alkaline, really. Anyway, we'll clean that off and um, I'll leave it sitting there a little bit, let it neutralise properly. Put some of that white vinegar on here as well. Now, what I'm going to do actually is desolder these holes. So, clear these holes out first. Right, so that's the holes cleaned out. So now I'm going to scrape it in these tracks with a fiberglass brush because it's relatively gentle and see how far the damage actually goes. It might not be too bad, or well, it could be quite bad, we'll find out. Sometimes you have to scrape it instead with like a, a scalpel like I've got here. I'm hoping I don't have to resort to that. I'd rather do it more gently with a fiberglass brush. It really depends. Because what I'm really trying to do is take the top layer of corrosion off and get back down the nice bare copper so then I can retin it and then put some uh, protection over the top of that with some more with some more solder mask. It certainly it's taken a bit to get that off. Yeah, you get the idea. I'll come back once it's done. So you go, I had to scratch it a little bit to try and get rid of the worst of it. And then we're back to the fiberglass brush afterwards. But you can see this trace here is completely gone, it's no longer attached to that pad. And this one's not too bad actually. There's a little bit of missing copper just there and the other side's actually looking okay now the wire on this one here is gone basically it's detached from the other side and there's actually a little trace goes from this c4 to there this is for the voltage detection for the microcontroller to check what voltage the battery is so i think that's part of that system but there's a trace that comes down and that's actually still there it looks fine this side looks okay there i've rebuilt this side so I'll just put some solder mask around on there. You know, can't. Let's hit the UV and cure that up. Now I've spread it around all around those bases to try and stop any future corrosion getting in there on those two. I'll put a little bit on the back of that one as well, but yeah. It's the main thing I'll try and do is cover those tracks up and try and protect it all so there's no potential issues in future from that. You know, it's just one of these things, just do what you can. Expose it to the UV for a little while, let it cure. And then that'll be that bit done. I mean, you can see the spring's not wonderful. I did give the end of it a scratch up to try and clean up the contact so where it does touch a battery is better. Ideally, I try and find some of these terminals and, and get replacements. I don't actually have any. I should try and find some. If you know where to get these particular terminals from, let me know. If you know what the part number is, that'd be even better. I need to find some like that so if, in the future I can just replace it rather than trying to repair that terminal. I should have to look on DigiKey or something. They'll probably on there. And I'll put that sticker back down again after that. And then we can retest and see if the display issue is resolved at the same time because it could be related. It could be a voltage sag issue which is causing that display. You know, that track was basically gone, so it wouldn't surprise me actually. It was barely working. All right, let's try powering this up. Put the batteries back in. That's very faded now. I'm thinking that's probably better because it, before it was very dark. It started off very dark, so that's probably improved something. I might just monitor it and see what happens to it, see if it seems to get any better or worse at this current setting because I did actually reduce the, the contrast quite a lot so right now that's looking faded so that's what I'd expect if I've reduced the contrast and it's working correctly I might leave it on for a couple of minutes and see if it changes well I don't think it's got any more faded back than it was before it looks about the same it's been a few minutes so let's just try adjusting it this isn't right screwed over but let's see if we can get in there with it yeah we can great so let's wind this contrast up it was quite high up before so I'll wind this up quite a bit and get it to where I think it. Right, so there's a the contrast here. All right, so to give you an idea. That is kind of what it looked like before when I was turning it on. All right, like that. That all blacked out, barely readable text. 
right, and that's when I turned it right down to sort of basically there to get rid of that. But now we can bring it up, and it's actually looking kind of okay. Let's get it to the point where as soon as you get it from where I can judge it. So square on, starting to see the blocks come up there. All right, square on, starting to see the blocks. Now I'm going to turn this off, leave that for a little while, and I'll come back and recheck it. See, we're seeing different when I turn it back on after five minutes. So interesting thing about these is that these batteries are actually in parallel. All right, so I'll, I'll explain this a bit better. So although these take four batteries, they only actually need two. So this bank here and this bank here are in parallel because you've got these bridging terminals here. So you think normally you go like bridging terminal here, bridging terminal there, bridging terminal there, and you get six volts. This isn't how this works. There's negative, zero volts, 1.5 volts, bridges across, comes down, three volts. Now this terminal here is in parallel with this one, and this terminal here is in parallel with this one. It's actually two parallel three volt banks it runs from. You may not realize that, so I'll prove it. I'll take my battery out, all right? So now there's no link in this bank. It's only those two batteries there working. I'll turn the switch on, and it still goes. So if you got really stuck with one of these things and you only had two good batteries, you could probably run it off two batteries as long as you have them set in the correct bank. Little interesting things to know. So now looking at the switching converter here, it's a boost converter. So if I probe onto the input power supply to the microcontroller, just here, I'm getting 5.4 volts right now. Okay, that's what we're getting. That is working. Now I'm just just watching the voltage. It is gradually dropping down. Which is interesting. It's sitting at 5.4. I'll right, show you some cameras. So I've got the probe looped through the little convenient little loop on that battery terminal, which is zero volts. So I'll turn it on. Now this is the buck converter here, 5.4 volts. And as you can see, it's gradually dropping. Now I would have thought it would be 5 volts anyway, not 5.5 volts or 5.4 volts. I think it's actually sitting a little bit on the high side, which is interesting. There's three volts supplied there. And you've got some switching stuff going on here, three volts there. So yeah, it's like this is the output of the diode, it's that voltage is gradually dropping down. Now, I would have thought it would be, like I said, a low voltage anyway. I thought it would be in five volts, not five point four or whatever. But it's gradually sagging. And if I come over here, which I think is this one here, I think that's it there. Twelve point three two. 1.232, 1.2.3, yeah, I think that might be to do with the contrast control. This little resistor here, I think it is. So maybe that's part of the reason the voltage is sagging as well, and this contrast is fluctuating a bit, because the supply rail may be changing, which is then affecting the contrast control. That's entirely possible. Now it's 27 now. Check that side. There's a 5 volt supply there. So there's a 5 volt going through the resistor, which drops down. Which I then think goes to that trimmer. I might have to open it up again and have a look at that. I think it goes to that trimmer, which means that that voltage sagging could be what's causing the display contrast to change. Doesn't take much to change it, so that could be what's causing an offset on this display. It could be the voltage sagging. So there might be something wrong over here with this switching converter. It's still dropping. So when I first started doing this testing, I was getting a different reading. I was getting like 5.45 or something like that when I first started doing this testing. And it's been dropping ever since. So that's interesting. Now, I don't know if there's an issue with the chip which is controlling the voltage or, or whether there's a feedback issue or something like that. I might have to look at that more closely and see if I can figure that out. So I'm looking closely at the circuit here. There's a chip here which I think was minus T5. It looks like it basically goes straight through it. And then this one here, which is the actual switcher, I think, because it goes to the diode here and the inductor this side, I think, all goes to that. So this chip here, I think, is a switcher. It's marked as LTUN. I've got no idea what that is yet. I haven't tried to look it up. And here we've got a resistor, which is potentially in the feedback path. I need to check all this circuitry out yet. But it's connected to this point, which makes me think this could be feedback. And looks like a little bit of corrosion on there. Just on the edge, there's a tiny little bit. It's like a little bit crusty. It could be nothing, but it could be that it's slightly corroded and that's causing a shift and feedback to the, the switcher. It's possible. 
I'm going to look more closely at this on the microscope yet and see what's going on, but that's a 3323 marking. So I've had a little look around, I found this part. This is a, uh, it's an LTC 3400. Yeah, LTC 3400. So pin 3 is indeed the feedback path. That should be a ground side there. This will be DC output that side. Okay, so it's DC output, which should be 5 volts there. This is a resistor divider. Goes back into the feedback here. This is supposed to be a 332K resistor, which is marked 332 with 3. I'm measuring 215 across that, so that could be because it's in circuit still. It could be affecting the readings, it's quite likely. But as it's a bit crusty, I'm a little bit suspicious about that. And as the upper voltage is also a little bit high. So if this is not quite reading this voltage correctly on this divider, its output will be a little bit higher. And it's only supposed to go up to 5 volts anyway. 5 volts is supposed to be the maximum. And we're getting 5.4 or so. I'm suspicious about the resistor being bad. Now I don't think I've got any 332k resistors. I'll have to see what I can do there. I think the fact this is drifting around is telling me that something's going on just here. It could be as temperature varies, this resistor's changing value slightly and it's just upsetting things a little bit and changing the bonnets so I think I might need to look at replacing that resistor if I've got another one because I'm just suspicious about it so I'll just install a new resistor here it's a 330k it's not quite the same but it's hopefully close enough let's uh, shove it all back into casing and we'll see what we get it's still cooling down a little bit I did use hot air to do the final seating of that resistor but we'll see what we get if you turn this on what voltage are we getting here now? If I put on voltage, it'd be better, wouldn't it? There we go. Look at that. 5.08. That's much better. That's where it should be. 5 volts. Yes. Great. So I think my suspicion there was correct about that resistor being bad. And that's looking rock solid as well. It's not drifting at all. Which means the contrast over here will be the same too. 117. 1.17 that's sitting right there so that explains why the contrast is drifting around because this adjustment here is basically a voltage divider I'll show you that in more detail so we've got a 472 resistor here which has got the 5 volt rail coming up that side it goes through that resistor which then connects to this trimmer and the other side of the trimmer goes to ground now the junction of that point there and the trimmer goes to one of the pins over here which is the contrast adjustment of this LCD. Some LCDs don't use them. Oh, I might be up this side. It might be that side. I can't which side it is. It's one of those. It's either there or there. One of them, anyway. So some LCDs don't have external trimmers for contrast. Some do. This one does. Um, if it didn't have an adju external adjustment, it wouldn't matter. It wouldn't affect anything. But that is a good clue that something was going on. So that point there is where the contrast adjustment actually is. So if you need to check the contrast is playing up, measure that point right there. And I'll tell you what the voltage is, like I was showing you just now. So I'll shove it back on again, see if it's changed. It was 117 before, 1.17. There we go, still the same, 1.169. No issues there. So that's working fine, that's now stable. That's dropped very slightly, just a few millivolts. But that's way better than it was before, it was drifting everywhere before. So that is a great improvement. Let's check over here, yes, yeah, same. So. No issues there. Don't forget as well, I was doing hot air on this thing before to, to bed everything down, so it probably was a little bit warmer. So it's still stabilizing to room temperature. So a shift wouldn't be unsurprising. There's a very small shift for temperature. I mean, I can prove that by getting hot air and actually warming this up very slightly. Let's do that. And we'll see what happens to the voltage when we warm it very slightly. So I've got 5.76 there. There we go, warmed it very slightly, and there we go, went up. So yep, slight variations due to temperature. No problem at all. Yep, look at that. So this regular circuit up here, I should actually explain a bit more about what this chip actually is. So it's 1.2 megahertz, 600 milliamp boost converter. And that's what it's basically doing. Like I said, that resistor there, that R20 is a feedback, R19 is feedback. All right, so R19 will be the main supply coming in. R19 will be the main rail output from the actual switcher. Feeding back through R19, divided down by R20, and back into the chip. And it's feedback pin, so it knows what voltage is generating. So if you change that ratio and those resistors, you change the upper voltage. And so the chip is rated at 5 volts max. That's supposed to be its maximum voltage you can do is 5 volts. So the fact it's sitting at 5.4 is a big clue that, hey, maybe the feedback wasn't working at all. The rest of it looks okay. Um, I'm glad I've got that solved now. And the contrast is looking really good. 
I might give it another tweak now, adjusted the voltage. I can put this thing back together, I think it will basically be working now. I'm happy with that. That's all looking good. So one last check I want to do before I fully reassemble it is to check the voltage sensing and see if I can actually see the current voltages. So let's go in here, find battery test, check battery, 96%, there we go. That's fine, you can see the battery voltage, brilliant. That's working. I can definitely put this thing back together now. Well there you go, that's that fixed, I'm happy with that. I'm confident this will be good for service now without any future issues. With battery corrosion issues, you have to be really thorough trying to sort those things out. As you saw, the tiny little bit of corrosion on the resistor, which you could easily miss, was causing you a problem. So if you don't thoroughly inspect these things, you can easily miss a problem, which is going to be quite severe. I mean, that's a really small resistor. There's another out of two resistor, which I've now lost. It's on my desk here somewhere. There it is. That's a resistor. So, you know, we could try and measure it, actually. Let me see if we can get a value off that thing. Now we've got it out of circuit. Let's have a look, see if we can actually measure it, or if we're going to flick it away and have it disappear on us. 306. So that's measuring 30 low. Yeah. Okay. Definitely out of spec. Glad I replaced it. So check out my other videos. If you're into farm tech stuff, you're looking for farm tech information, I have a farm tech playlist, which this video will be part of. Go and check those out. I've got lots of repairs and information about the farm tech timer stuff, which I work on. You know, it might be something there which helps you out, maybe. Funny that, if you're just looking for general repairs, I do lots of electronic stuff. Mostly test gigs, like fixing test equipment. There'll be videos down below in the description and probably on screen now. Subscribe if you're not already subscribed. And over there's a Patreon support link if you want to help support the channel by using Patreon. Give me money to buy equipment with to do more repairs. Catch you later.